Hey everybody, so today we've got our hands on iOS 12 for the iPhone 10 as well as the iPod Touch 6th generation. So Apple just announced iOS 12 today, June 4th, 2018 at their Worldwide Developers Conference and it brings tons of great features and improvements for all devices, both new and old. One of the focuses of iOS 12 is to bring performance improvements to those older devices and iOS 12 will be supporting all the same devices as iOS 11, going back all the way to devices from 2013, such as the iPhone 5S and later, iPad Air and later, and iPad Mini 2 and later, as well as the iPod Touch 6th generation. So today, we're just going to take a look at a couple of the hundreds of new features in this update. So the first thing you'll notice is that beautiful new wallpaper. So we can find this in Settings and Wallpaper. Choose New Wallpaper. And you'll see it right here. Um, it's really, really cool. They have not removed any wallpapers from iOS 11 except for the iOS 9 default wallpaper. So you still have all of these wallpapers. And they might add some more in the future. And you'll also see that they have moved the iOS 12, 11, and 10 wallpapers above the Earth and Moon wallpapers. So they're no longer below there. Um, there's no new live or dynamic wallpapers. Now let's talk about some of the improvements for the iPhone 10 specifically. So first of all is the control center. So you'll see that now these status bar icons such as your battery level and your Wi-Fi and carrier are now a little bit larger than before and easier to see. There's also been some improvements made to Face ID so if for some reason it's not working. There's a new animation for when the passcode appears so it now just swipes down. And you can also swipe back up and give Face ID another try if you want, instead of having to enter your passcode, so that's cool. Also, jumping into Settings and Face ID and Passcode, you'll see that we have a new option to set up an alternate appearance. So if you have an appearance that is dramatically different from your normal one that you use a lot, then you can set that up here and it'll make Face ID work better for that appearance, so that's a pretty cool feature. Additionally, the unlock icon animation is now slightly different. And perhaps the biggest improvement for the iPhone X is with multitasking. So now, you no longer have to hold down on an app to close out of it. You can simply just swipe up. So now it's much faster to close out of apps, and I feel like this makes a lot more sense. So let's get a couple of apps open here. And you can see, you can just swipe out super fast and easy like that. So those were some of the features for the iPhone 10 exclusively, so now let's take a look at everything else that's new in iOS 12. So iOS 12 aims to improve the performance of your device, whether it's a new device or an old device. So everything you do is faster and more responsive. So for example, launching the settings app here on the iPhone 10 is even faster than before, where it was already very fast, but now it loads pretty much instantly, there's no wait time and it's very, very quick. And the performance improvements on older devices are even more noticeable. So first of all, I don't know why some of these apps aren't like loading, but whatever, we won't need any of those. So going into settings here, you can see that that is also very quick. It's almost as fast as the iPhone 10 actually, which is pretty impressive what Apple's been able to do here. So some of the specific areas where Apple has promised improved performance is the slide to open the camera. Um, it's supposed to be, I think, 70% faster. Um, so you can see there, um, it's not too much of a difference. It is definitely faster. But basically they've done this by kind of um, removing the animation um, or just making it less apparent. So you can see here, slide, then the camera kind of like flies in. I don't know if you can see that, but... Um, kind of like zooms in. If we go here, they've removed that, so it's not as much of a zoom. It still looks a little bit different, but it is smoother and faster. Also, bringing up the share sheet is supposed to be 40% faster, so let's say we select a photo, and if we press this button, you can see that that definitely is faster. They've made the animation quicker, so that is great, because that was kind of there's a little delay before even on newer devices. And next is the keyboard pop-up is supposed to be 50% faster. So let's go into notes and create a new note. And um, let's go out of that and then pop up the keyboard. 
That's definitely quicker. So, nice performance improvements for all devices. iOS 12 also brings some improvements to Animojis for the iPhone 10. So you can see there is a new user interface for selecting an Animoji when you're in this small view. Um, you can also just pop it out like before. Um, this looks slightly different than before, but overall it's the same. And you've also got four new Animojis. So we have a tiger, a koala, a T-Rex, and a ghost. And also you can now finally stick out your tongue for Animojis. So that's really fun. Even works for robots, even alien and dragon. Pretty much all of them. So that's cool. And there's also a new feature which is Memoji. So this is very similar to the Galaxy S9. Um, so you can create an Animoji that looks like yourself. So here is the designer and you can see it still mimics your facial expressions while you're creating it. So here you can choose your skin tone, you can make it more pink or more yellow. Um, you can choose freckles, three different options there. You've got hairstyles and hair colors here. Um, you can also add highlights, different colors here. You've got head shape, so you can actually choose the age, child, adult, or elderly. And different head shapes here. Eyes, you can choose the colors, shape, eyelashes, um, eyebrows here. Nose and lips, um, lip color or lipstick, like that. Ears, you can change the size. You can do earrings here. Facial hair, eyewear, you can choose your frame color and your lens color. Headwear hats and that is it so that's how you make your own memoji and you can send that to your friends you can make as many as you want and it's really really cool next we're going to take a look at some of the improvements that have been made to the user interface now there's not a lot to talk about here it still basically looks the same as iOS 11 but a few of them are there's a new icon for the voice memos app which looks really cool and the Voice Memos app itself has gotten a complete overhaul, pretty much the first time since iOS 7. So it looks completely different, it's now all white, and the record button is at the bottom. When you start a recording, it looks very different, it takes up a lot less space, and the waveform is now red. And also, Voice Memos now has support for location services, so you can see, if we go in, you can now use location services for voice memos and voice memos will be named with the location where they were recorded so you can see this one is named home instead of before it would just be new recording one two three etc so that's a pretty cool feature there's also a recently deleted for voice memos so you can go in here and you can undelete or clear all and there's a new search and if you go into a voice memo, you now have the option to duplicate it. And when you go into edit, you can see this looks very different. Um, you can trim it, which is now yellow. So I've got lots of different colors going on here. Um, so yeah. That's the new voice memos app. There's also support for voice memos in iCloud. So if we go in here, you can see that you can now have your voice memos in the cloud as well as stocks. Voice memos also is now on the iPad and the Mac as well as stocks. And this app has also gotten an overhaul. So you can see we've got a new stock splash screen, all new design, market news, and now works on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. So you can see this looks completely different. We now have all our stocks with their graph next to them. You can go into a stock to get more information as well as news about that stock. And it doesn't look like there's a landscape mode anymore, so I don't know why they removed that. Um, you can also scrub just like before. Um, basically it's just a new design with um, stories, which is pretty cool. So you can see your stocks slide across the top here. 
So a cool new design. Of course, that hasn't been revamped for a long time either. Another thing is that your wallpapers will no longer be dimmed. So if you want to use your own custom wallpaper, then it will no longer be dimmed like it was before. So we can set this lock screen. And previously it would like dim the wallpaper a little bit, but no longer does it do that. So that is actually really awesome. Also, the FaceTime icon is slightly different. And finally, the corners on the battery indicator are slightly more rounded on all devices except for the iPhone 10. Next are some updates to the news app. So you can see we have a new spotlight tab here, as well as browse and today. Also, iBooks receives an update. It's now called Apple Books. So you can see Discover, Escape, and Grow. Okay, continue. So you can see it's got an all new design with a unique font and just everything looks different. We've got Reading Now, Library, Bookstore, Audiobooks. And I guess you update your books. I don't know where you do that now. Um, maybe under here. Updates, there we go. There's all your books. So this looks pretty cool. Um, let's open up this iPhone user guide. Looks a little different. And we've got all the same features as before. Overall, just a better experience for books. Now, another main focus of iOS 12 is with notifications and do not disturb and usage. So you can see with our notifications, if you slide over, we have a new button for manage. And here is where we can change some of these settings. These are all new, so you can see in the notification settings, we've got new icons up here. We've also got notification grouping and this will finally group them by app. We finally have that. Um, they used to have it in iOS 9 and before, and then they got rid of it in iOS 10 and 11, but it's finally back. So we've got grouping, and it looks a little bit different now. Um, I can't really show you that because I don't have any notifications. But yeah, managed on notifications, and it'll just take you right to the notification settings for the app, so that's convenient. Now here in settings, you'll see some things have been rearranged. So sounds and haptics is now up below the notification center and control center has been moved below general. And then we have a new screen time. So this will show you how much time you've used your device. You can see how long you've been using each app and some of them are grouped into categories. So you can see that we've gotten social networking, entertainment, productivity, um, and you can see detailed information for each app. Um, you can see how many times you pick up your phone per hour and exactly how many every day. Shows you how many notifications you've gotten every day, um, around nine per hour, or you can see just how many you get each hour. You can see how many notifications from each app. So lots of detailed information. And what's this? Oh, you can scrub along this bar graph. So very, very detailed, interesting information about your screen time. Um, also, you can actually set limits for yourself. So if we want to limit how long we can use Snapchat, then we can put like one hour, 59 minutes, and you can customize exactly which days. So very precise control. You can do apps and categories. You can do like social networking. Um, Here's some categories add. So going back, you can see downtime. You can schedule time away from the screen. Um, let's turn that on, see. So you can choose hours. Um, app limits, you can set time limits, which we've already done, and you can delete them here. And you can choose which apps you want to be allowed at all times. Content and privacy restrictions. You set a passcode, and this is basically um, restrictions, but laid out differently. So, you can see iTunes and App Store, 
which apps you want allowed. Basically all the same things. There might be a couple of new options. Um, we've got our privacy settings here for some reason. Um, you got new passcode changes, I think, account changes, like a little data, volume limit, general disturbable driving TV provider and background app, app activities. Um, disable screen time passcode. You can set up screen time for the family. It doesn't appear to be working. None of these do, actually. You can actually turn off screen time altogether if you want. And you can clear your data. So lots of cool monitoring features there. So going into the do not disturb settings, we can turn this on or scheduled and we have a new bedtime mode. So I guess it can automatically detect like when you plug in your iPhone for the night and you're done using it. And basically what this will do is just get rid of all your notifications you can see here. So they'll be silenced while your iPhone is locked. Um, so you won't see those until you turn off bedtime mode and basically it just gets rid of the distractions If you wake up in the middle of the night just to check the time on your phone You won't see all the notifications and then in the morning you can choose when you want to be able to see those notifications So that's interesting uh, Unfortunately, there's still no option to set different times for different days of the week in do not disturb I was hoping they would add that but unfortunately not and also in the control center, you can have 3D touch on the do not disturb and you can just schedule for one hour until tomorrow morning or until I leave this location and you can also jump right in there. Um, within the control center settings, we have one new module for scan QR code. So this will just take you directly to the camera, the QR code camera. So there you can just quickly scan a QR code. Which is nice. Additionally, there's some new battery settings. So if we go into here, you can see this looks different. Um, of course, we still have suggestions for battery life, like before. But here, we got a detailed graph for your battery level and usage time. So you can see um, right here, like it goes down and then it charged it and it's going down. So nice detailed graph and your usage time for each hour of the day, a bar graph. And then all the same usage settings here. You can see your screen on usage, screen off usage, which I guess would be like music playback. I'm um, not seeing the standby time. I don't know where that is. I thought you could change this to the last 24 hours or 10 days, but yeah, I'm not seeing the standby. It's weird. Now next is a brand new app called Measure, and this I think is only available for the iPhone 6s and later I'm pretty sure, because it requires AR kit, and that's only available on the 6s and later. So it's called Measure, and I don't really have anything to demonstrate this with, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can measure objects, looks like it's kind of working here, so you can tap, and then, let's see, add a point, and then can we drag this? Oh, there we go. So it's a pretty cool app. We can stop that and you can see there is 10 inches, 10 and a half inches. Um, we can take a picture of this, I guess, if you want. And it pops up with the screenshot UI. And we can edit that quickly there, save photos. Um, go back, move iPhone to start. So this is a pretty cool little app here. Um, we've also got our level here, which previously was in the Compass app. Looks like this is a bolder font as well and larger. So let's go into the Compass app and see if the level is still there. It's not actually, so it looks like they moved that to measure, which kind of makes sense, I guess. So cool new measuring app to measure things. Speaking of which, they have upgraded ARKit to version 2. So it can now recognize 3D objects and you can do multiplayer AR games. Lots of cool stuff within that. Now next are some major updates to messages and FaceTime. So let's make a new message to myself. So you can see our apps bar looks a little bit different now. Predictive text also looks different. Um, and let's actually send a message really quick. And then if we pop that down, it's still right there. It's now gray instead of white though. We have a new photos right here. So that's cool. Um, the camera is now just the camera. 
and then photo. So those are separate buttons now. But with the camera, we have some cool new effects. So you can tap on this star down here, and basically, um, I guess it only works. Okay, never mind. So you can use either camera, but it automatically switches to the front. So you have all of your iMessage apps down here, and you can add those in. So if we tap on one, you can drag it in, or just pop it in. Let's see if we can drag that. Okay, I lied. You can't. Oh, never mind. You can drag it. However, if they are animated stickers, they won't be animated for this, unfortunately. Um, but we have a new shapes right here, if I can get it. Um, let's put that on there. We can make it bigger. Um, we've got text. We can choose the font. We've got bubbles, emojis, it looks like. Oh, we've got all our emojis here. So, kind of like Snapchat, I guess. And we've got just our regular filters, except we've got some new ones. So we've got a comic book, watercolor, ink, all these cool filters, and then just our regular ones like mono and those. And it looks like you can swipe. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Um, and you can add your emojis in here. You have to use the front camera, of course. Um, so if we add an emoji. It'll go right over your face, which is pretty cool. So those are some cool new features for your iMessage camera. Of course, we can just take the picture and then we can edit it um, just with the regular photo editor, which is cool. And we can mark up and then just send it off. So lots of different things we can do there. Looks like you can also edit it after the fact with the effects so we can Plop an emoji on afterwards if you want. Lots of cool things you can do there. So those are some new features and messages. And now for the big one, which is FaceTime. This has not gotten an update in a long time. So you can see it's an updated look to match the rest with the big, bold font there. So let me just start a FaceTime call with myself. And we can do audio and video. So it's ringing, but I'm not going to pick it up. So we still have our effects here, so you can put an, an emoji on in the middle of a FaceTime call, which is cool. Basically everything you have in iMessage. But the big new feature is group FaceTime, finally. And you can now FaceTime with your friends with up to 32 people actually, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but I can't really show you that since no one is using iOS 12 yet, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's group FaceTime, and basically how it works is the person who's talking, their window will be the biggest, and then um, the other people will just be at the bottom, and then once they start talking, it'll like pop into view. So it's pretty cool. It'll be fun to try out once everyone else is using iOS 12. But yeah, group FaceTime. Now finally is an all new Photos app. So this is gonna take me a while to get used to because it's very different, but basically, you are greeted with your moments, so your collections and your years and all of that. Um, and you can go to your albums here, so you can go to all photos. And then you have your favorites and then all the albums you've created. And then you have your shared albums for iCloud photo sharing, people and places, and then you have your media types down here, which is kind of interesting. Um, we got videos, selfies, live photos, portraits, long exposure, panoramas, time lapse, slow mo, burst screenshots, animated. And then you have other albums like import history, which I don't know if that's new or not. I don't know exactly what that is. Um, and then hidden and recently deleted. So unfortunately, you don't have any thumbnails for these. So it's kind of harder to see. But that's the all new photos app you have for you. And here's where you can find all of your memories your shared albums, featured photos, which is new. So you can see recently edited, recent favorite. Um, it'll also show you photos like on this day in previous years. And then we have sharing suggestions at the top. So basically it will actually detect faces in photos and then it will suggest that you might wanna share those photos with that person. So that's pretty cool um, and once you share someone with something with someone, then it will give them a suggestion to share the photos from that event right back. So super cool new sharing features. 
And finally is an enhanced search. So we have events, people, places, categories, and groups. Categories is new, so you can see we've got cat, animal, food, dog, mountain, nightclub, all different types of things. And the results are supposed to be better, so um, there might also be more categories to choose from. So search is a lot better in photos. Um, so yeah, that is the all new photos app in iOS 12. Next let's talk about Siri, so let's turn this on. And now with Siri, you're able to create shortcuts within third-party apps. I don't really know if I have any apps that can take advantage of this feature yet. But basically, let's say you're within a coffee app or something and you can create a shortcut for Siri to order you a specific kind of coffee. So you can create a shortcut that says like, order my coffee, I guess, and then um, Siri will know what that means and it can order that automatically for you. So things like that should be a pretty cool feature. Siri can also tell you when motorsport races start. You can find answers to food and celebrity questions. Look for a password or find a photos memory. Other minor things, you now have support for third-party navigation apps within CarPlay. Safari is supposed to be a lot more secure and websites aren't able to track you as much anymore. Um, wallet, you can now add student ID cards. Another thing that I noticed was with the voiceover, so if we go to that, voiceover now has the same voice as the new Siri voice introduced in iOS 11, so let's take a listen. Voiceover on, settings, voiceover, switch button on, double tap to toggle setting, voiceover, voiceover So, we have the new nicer sounding voice for voiceover now, but what I have found is that it was only available on newer devices, because if we go to my iPod Touch and then voiceover, you can see it still has the old voice, so I don't know why that is. Um, hopefully they fix that because I don't see why it would be only on the newer devices. So that was just my little look at iOS 12 for the iPhone as well as the iPod Touch. I'm sure there's so many more features, but I just couldn't cover those in this video. So this is going to be such a great release. Of course, it's not available to the public right now. It's only for developers. It won't be released till the fall. However, if you do want to get the beta a little bit sooner, they will be releasing a public beta in a few weeks. So if you want to sign up for that, you go to beta.apple.com and create an account with your Apple ID, and you'll get the iOS 12 public beta coming in a couple weeks. So I really hope you enjoyed my first look at iOS 12. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.